I like to talk about art styles and why I think it's important to pick a unique one. And I was thinking about this when I was playing uh, Jamestown um, for Jamestown Plus for PS4, uh, which is a really cool game and you should check it out, although it's super hard and I totally suck at it. Um, but the, the interesting thing about Jamestown is in, it's pixel art, but instead of, you know, doing 8-bit, you know, uh, NES stuff, they chose, um, like, Super Nintendo 16-bit pixel art. And I think it makes a big difference, and I, 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 I don't know, maybe it's more challenging than 8-bit than pixel art. I, I'm not a pixel art expert. But, you know, it creates a really different look. And I think that's, um, that <clears throat> is advantageous. And that's definitely something with NeverEnding Nightmares, is we wanted to create a game that looked like no other game out there, um, because we felt like that would, um, you know, help attract eyeballs, help differentiate us. And, and you know, like, if you look at 8-bit pixel art, I mean, certainly there's games like Shovel Knight, which really commit to it, and they really do uh, an amazing job. But then there's some games which are just like, oh, we're pixel art because, you know, we can be. And I mean, certainly uh, Shovel Knight's not the most, the, the only amazing pixel art. You know, there's like Swords and Sorcery uh, and, and some other games where they do uh, pixel art um, really well. I like the Lone Survivor a lot. Um, but, uh, you know, the, there's... Um, there's plenty of other art styles out there, and, and if you look at indie games, there's a ton of pixel art uh, games. So I think, you know, on the, just for pixel art, I think it's tough to stand out. Uh, it's tough to um, get those eyeballs. Uh, and, you know, again, if you try to do sort of like realistic, um, but then sort of miss the mark, uh, you know, sort of like, you know, PS2 graphics or... Or uh, even, you know, like trying for the AAA and then just, you know, coming short in the uncanny valley. I think that's not necessarily the best approach to go. So, so certainly when we think about making a game, uh, and I think about how can we make a game that looks different and looks unique. And so uh, with, with Never Ending Nightmares, you know, the answer was, was pretty easy. Uh, you know, Edward Gorey... Um, I don't know, just came to me and seemed like a, a really good um, fit uh, for for the game thematically. Um, but for our next project, it was it was definitely, you know, we wanted to do a different art style. I mean, our, our fallback was doing, again, another Edward Gorey-themed game, because, you know, that's, that we can sort of own that. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I was hoping to do a different art style, and, and, you know, I had a few ideas in mind, and, and the artist had a few ideas, and we ended up taking it in sort of a different direction that, that I had planned, um, and, you know, the, the things that the artist wanted to do. Uh, and so, I mean, like, I don't think anyone will be, like, super surprised or amazed when they see our game, you know, it's still 2D, and it's, this time it's, like, uh, grayscale, watercolor, um, so we're still doing the colored objects, are interactive, I think that worked really well, and, and, um, I was happy with how that worked, and I think it was a good solution, uh, to, to, you know, the problems with immersion, and, and, uh, you know, I've found that we can do some really interesting things with the, the grayscale, uh, watercolor look, um, and, uh, it's, um, it, it, at least uh, I can't think of any game that, that looks the same as, as ours. And, and certainly, um, you know, I think uh, Child of Light was kind of watercolory. There's been a few sort of watercolory. There's an interesting one, I think, where you're um, blind or something, and then, then you just get a little watercolor splashes, like, when you hear something. I, I don't know. Uh, it's an indie game. It seems neat. I, I don't... Apparently, I don't even remember what it's called. Um... But, you know, like, the, the grayscale watercolor is, is sort of interesting. And, and I don't even know if it's technically watercolor. Um, it's, I don't know, sometimes the artists call it an ink wash or something. I don't know. And we're, we're not actually doing it by hand because uh, that would be a nightmare. Um, so we're, we're doing it in the computer, but we, we, we did a lot of work to, to nail the art style, get the brushes we want, and... 
um, you know, get different textures. Adam painted up a bunch of things, uh, you know, just some of the things like salt on the canvas and all these other things, and then we incorporate them, and, and Joe created the, the different textures for the, the lighting uh, effect, and, and uh, that was super challenging this time around because we're 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 trying to give it all the different textures and and um yeah spoiler alert we're doing the the um the the lighting some lighting things but i mean at least like i liked our lighting effect last game but oh man i think our lighting effect this game is even cooler like i don't know again i'm i'm totally biased but like i just love watching it fade off and um well, you'll see soon enough. Um, but, uh, anyway, um, uh, I, the, the point of this developer diary was not to talk about the art style for, um, our next game, uh, because I didn't want to put in, you know, I, I want the reveal to be really exciting and cool. Ow. Um, but, uh, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, just that I think if you're approaching an indie game, uh, developing an indie game, you can't compete on polygons, right? You can't make your game uh, look better than a AAA, you know, pixel art it sort of uh, has been done to death. I mean, I don't know. There, there was one article that was saying, like, you know, pixel art is bad and people discriminate, don't like pixel art games. Uh, you know, um, they think retro is bad. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't know, but at, at least for me, right, like, I like new and interesting things, and I imagine, you know, press likes new and interesting things, so, uh, I think, you know, if you're not doing, you know, a new and interesting art style, then it's going to be tougher to get press, it's going to be tougher to get that attention, and, and, you know, it may not jump out uh, at people, you know, when they're browsing for games on Steam. I don't know. I mean, obviously this is all speculation, but I think, you know, at least for us, uh, doing different looking games is important, um, and, and it's definitely something that we would want to keep doing. Even if we did 3D, I think we would do, you know, stylized 3D. Um, maybe not cartoony, maybe stylized in a different way. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, that can be a, a whole uh, other challenge and can sometimes be harder for artists than creating, you know, sort of like pseudo-realistic looking 3D. Um, but, you know, the, the, the problem is that creating, you know, like really good looking 3D is just... Uh, hugely time consuming and then you limit your your device support like you know you can't run uh the witcher 3 on an ouya you know um so uh there's definitely um disadvantages of of creating something that only runs on you know top of the line spec uh especially you know if you're trying to attract a broad audience um you know like for us we really wanted to get the the Intel integrated graphic support, um, and we had to do a lot of work to get, like, the older ones, and I had to buy this laptop with this weird chipset, and then I realized that we just had this stupid mistake on OpenGL, because it had different features and blah blah blah. No one, no one is interested in this. Um, but anyway, uh, anyway, that's the basics, um, uh, of what I was trying to say, is that Pick a different art style. Do something cool. Do something different. Anyway, thanks for watching.